you are? Sure. Uh, my name is Tori, T-O-R-R-I. Mets, M as in Mary, E-T-Z. I am a physician here at Denver Health and high-risk obstetrics. Can you just so, tell us the basic findings of your study and what, uh, what you found and how you, how you saw the Sure. Um, so the question is just to talk about the basic findings of the study. Uh, so what we did is we had uh, two of the investigators on the team contact uh, 400 randomly selected dispensaries in Colorado um, and we just called them and asked them, told them that we were pregnant with uh, nausea at eight weeks gestation and asked if they had any recommendations regarding cannabis products. And uh, what did they tell you? Uh, and what we found is that 69% of the randomly selected dispensaries that we contacted did recommend some type of cannabis product to the pregnant caller. Why is that bad? Um, it's, it was surprising and concerning to us because there are uh, data that uh, would suggest that cannabis can be harmful to the developing fetus. Um, there are a fair amount of data demonstrating decreased growth of the fetus when exposed to cannabis, uh, as well as some concern for more long-term harms uh, in terms of cognitive uh, development uh, of the brain in utero. That, is that definitive, the, uh, the, the, the risk that you, that you just uh, noted? Researchers are certainly doing more work to try to determine what the exact risks are of cannabis use during pregnancy, but there are a lot of data that have been consistent demonstrating these concerns with decreased growth, as well as some more recent data that have also demonstrated increased risk of uh, neonatal ICU admission. Is there any state law that requires uh, employees at any dispensary to relay to women that call with those questions a specific response. Just a bit. So sorry, I didn't repeat the question previously. This question is about whether there are any state laws uh, for dispensaries to follow regarding counseling of pregnant women. Uh, all dispensaries must put product labels on the cannabis products stating that they may have an increased risk of use in women who are pregnant or breastfeeding. But there are not laws that specifically prohibit dispensaries from selling products to women who are pregnant. Did any of the people... Which, I'm sorry? What sparked the study? Was it the link with the WIC program? Uh, the question is what sparked the study. Um, we were really interested in what women were hearing from other people regarding the use of cannabis during pregnancy. We know as healthcare providers that we counsel them that they shouldn't be using cannabis during pregnancy, but we also know that women seek information from a lot of other sources, from the internet, from friends, from family, and we thought probably also from dispensaries. And so we were interested in what they were being told by the dispensary employees. What was your reaction to what your study found? Uh, the question is what was my reaction to the study findings? We were very surprised at the study findings. We did not anticipate that 69% of the dispensaries we contacted would have a recommendation. We expected a much higher proportion of them to say that they couldn't make a recommendation or to encourage women to talk with their healthcare providers. How often did uh, any of the dispensary employees cite the warning labels that are on the products? Did that ever come up? <clears throat> the question was how often did dispensary employees cite the warning labels? Uh, they were uh, cited, but not frequently. And often the dispensary employee would cite that there was a warning label, but then go ahead and make a recommendation anyway. If that occurred, then we counted that as a dispensary making a recommendation. What do you think can be done in terms of over recommending? Yeah, the question is what can be done. We really hope that this study will engage uh, industry and scientists in working together to try to get a consistent message out to pregnant women regarding cannabis use in pregnancy. We also encountered a lot of women, or a lot of dispensary employees who said that they weren't sure what to tell a pregnant woman. And so I think there's a real opportunity for education as well, and we're hoping uh, to engage the dispensaries in that educational process. Does I it want matter? to ask a couple quick questions too, if I may, about the responses that you got from specific questions. <laughs> Why was the product recommended or not recommended? Technically, with you being pregnant, I do not think you're supposed to be consuming that. But if I were to suggest something, I suggest something high in THC. Yes, we did also, uh, the question was what about the specific recommendations? We did also prompt employees if they wanted to make a recommendation for a project to be a little more specific about what exactly they would recommend, how often they would recommend taking it. Um, some dispensaries did say they'd recommend products high in THC. Others said they'd recommend products high in CBD. Others weren't really sure. Some recommended edibles. Others recommended smoking or vaping the product. The recommendations are really across the, all across the board, and I think that represents that we don't 
really know uh, that this is effective in any way for treating uh, nausea during pregnancy. Do you have concerns about THC getting into the child system? <clears throat> the question is if I have concerns about THC getting into the child system. Uh, the answer is yes. We, we do know that THC crosses the placenta um, and so it, if a mother is using marijuana during pregnancy it does cross to the fetus. So it is definitely plausible that there would be effects on the fetus. It doesn't matter who was on the other end of that call. We don't know what their medical background was or how long they were working at the dispensary. The other question is, does it matter who was on the other end of the call? We weren't able to collect any specific information about the dispensary employees, mostly because this was not an effort to identify specifically any dispensary or any employee that gave advice. We really just wanted to look globally at the advice that was being given to women. Um, so we don't have information about how long the employee is working there, if they're men or women, or any of their characteristics. As a physician, have you seen, because marijuana is legal here, have you seen an increase in pregnant women using marijuana? Um, the question is, as a physician, have I seen an increase in pregnant women using marijuana? <clears throat> uh, the answer is that anecdotally, I would say that women do report marijuana use more often. Uh, we saw an initial um, time period after legalization in which we felt that women were liberalized in disclosing use to providers. I feel that has anecdotally tapered off somewhat uh, as women are learning that there are still some ramifications of reporting use even in the setting of legalization. Did your investigation focus on recreational or, or medical specifically? Uh, the question is whether our investigation focused on medical or recreational specifically. Uh, we randomly selected dispensaries throughout the state and we selected them in a proportion based on how many were licensed for medical use, recreational use, or both. And so we talked to people at all the different types of dispensaries and medical dispensaries were the dispensaries that most frequently recommended uh, cannabis for this purpose. Is that alarming? Uh, Marinol is, a, is, a, is something that's used for hyperemesis anyways, right? For Potentially for women who have very severe um, hyperemesis. So talk a little bit about sort of what the recommendations are for this recreational kind of um, cannabis versus Marinol, for example, and how they're different. Yeah, so the question is just about treatment of hyperemesis in pregnancy. Um, we have very clear protocols for how we typically would treat a woman who has hyperemesis or nausea vomiting of pregnancy. We have a lot of medications available to us to treat uh, nausea in pregnancy that have a lot of safety and efficacy data. So I would just really encourage women to utilize those medications instead of trying to uh, use marijuana for that purpose. We just can't say that marijuana is safe. What about specifically Marinol? That has, does have an indication for yeah, uh, Marinol specifically, we do not use as part of any of our protocols here at Denver Health. So the bottom line, main message? Uh, the bottom line, uh, main message is that, uh, so, you know, 69% of randomly selected dispensaries in Colorado recommended cannabis use for the treatment of nausea and pregnancy. And we hope that we can work with dispensaries and other public health um, workers in order to engage everybody in sending a consistent message that marijuana is not safe for women in pregnancy. So women should sort of treat it like alcohol or other other substances like that that they would be really cautious of. Is the, the question is whether they should treat it with like alcohol or other substances that they should be very cautious of. Um, and I would say that Yes, at this point, we should not be women should not be using marijuana during pregnancy. We have more extensive data for some other drugs, uh, as well as alcohol, just because people have they have been studied more. Um, investigators are really working to get women more evidence-based information about marijuana use in pregnancy. But until we have that, we really just need to encourage them not to use. Is there anything you can do as a physician within the study so that some women are afraid to talk to their doctors to say that they did use recreational marijuana? Is there anything physicians can do to encourage them to talk to them to get the proper advice? Yeah, the question is, is there anything that we can encourage women to do in terms of talking with their providers to get the proper advice? And I would really encourage all women to talk with their doctors about anything that they're putting into their body during pregnancy so that if nothing else, they can get all the information and make an informed decision about uh, what they're using during that critical time period. But is there something that doctors can do? 
that make it more approachable? For yes, um, doctors, uh, there are a number of resources available for doctors to use that have come out through the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment that really uh, give you language to talk with patients about the risks of marijuana during pregnancy. And I would encourage doctors to access those resources if they don't feel comfortable talking about it at this point and to make sure that they engage patients in uh, discussing why they're using the product and then being able to provide some alternatives that we think are uh, safer and more effective. But the 31% of, uh, of the dispensaries that didn't uh, recommend it, what, were their, what was sort of the rationale or what was the conversation like for those, for those folks? Um, for the for the 31% of dispensaries that did not recommend a product, honestly, those conversations were very short. They really just said, I can't recommend a product to you if you're pregnant. At that point, uh, as part of the research study, we asked them if their recommendation would change if we had a medical card. And there was only one dispensary at that point that said, oh, well, if you have a medical card, then I could offer you something. Otherwise, the remainder said, no, my recommendation would not change. Um, if you're pregnant, I can't make a recommendation. Does it seem like you're kind of probing them a little bit to go the wrong direction? Um, <clears throat> the question is whether I was goading them to go in the wrong direction. So uh, the initial uh, the initial opening to the conversation was very non-directive. Um, the caller said that she was eight weeks pregnant and was feeling very nauseated and was wondering if they had any recommendations. That was the opening to the conversation. Um, at that point, if they said no, then we did make that additional request about asking about a medical card. But the majority of them at that point said, yes, I have recommendations. And at that point, we really just tried to understand very specifically what their recommendations were. Um, we also asked them about whether it was safe in pregnancy and whether they'd recommend talking to a healthcare provider. So we did have a very specific script. Dr. Metz, yes. you mentioned before that there is no law that prohibits dispensaries from making a recommendation to an expected mom. Should there be? Yeah, the question is, there is, there is no law prohibiting uh, dispensaries from making recommendations to pregnant mothers. And the question is, should there be? We really didn't try to tackle the policy aspect uh, um, in this study. All we really wanted to know is what are pregnant women being told and how can we get everybody on the same page in terms of messaging to pregnant women. Have you had any conversations with the industry or industry representatives about you know moving forward and what the messaging should be? What should they should they what should they tell their employees? Should there be signage beyond just the stickers? So the question is if I've had any conversations with dispensaries or dispensary employees after completing this study. Um, we have not at this point, but as part of the IRB protocol, we do have to inform all the dispensaries of the results of this study. Uh, we have drafted a letter to the dispensaries basically explaining that they may have participated in this study. Um, and then also uh, providing them with some information about the concerns that we have about the risks of using uh, cannabis during pregnancy and where they can find more information about the use of cannabis in pregnancy so they could help provide that to pregnant women that contact them. Did they ever ask the age, uh, like how old you were when you called, just out of curiosity? Is there a no. legal? Yeah, um, the question is, did anybody ever ask our age when we called? And uh, no, there, weren't any, there were no places that asked our age. Okay, if, if anyone's interested, we've got, a, we've got another doctor here from the Poison and Drug Center who can talk more about toxicology and marijuana in general. Is that, you want to do that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.